This is CGTN, China Global Television Network. Nigerians have voted in perhaps the most competitive election in years, and the countdown to the outcome has begun. On this edition of Talk Africa, we look at what lies ahead for the incoming Nigerian leader. Welcome to the program. I'm Beatrice Marshall. And before we begin our discussion, let's start off with the very latest from Nigeria. Deji Badimosi is following that election closely. Deji, what is the latest on the election and what has the voter turnout been like? Well, first of Beatrice, uh, at this moment, uh, voting has ended in quite a number of polling stations across the country. So what we have going on in some places is uh, uh, the counting of votes. Uh, in fact, in some polling units, uh, th that counting has been done. So uh, what would happen now is that uh, after the, 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 the declaration of results at the polling unit, of course, it will be sent on to uh, the local government. Uh, uh, it will be sent on to the local government collation center where the collation will be done. And from there, it will go to state collation before it is sent to uh, the national level where the final result will be announced. So uh, in terms of turnout, it, it's too early to tell what the turnout is like. But from what I have seen, I don't think uh, we're in for any record turnout at all. Uh, I don't think uh, Nigeria will match that record set in uh, 2003 when uh, we recorded 69% turnout. I, I don't think that's going to happen this time because right. for, uh, the no for quite a number of polling stations I visited, honestly, the turnout was, was low. But we, we just have to wait and see because, um, you know, you have to calculate this now based on the entire turnout in the country. So we'll wait for the INEC uh, data on that. But there were security concerns ahead of this election, though, Deji. How, have there been any incidents so far? Of course, there have been, there've been a number of incidents uh, uh, across the country. Uh, as a matter of fact, in one of the states, uh, that's in Imo State, INEC has postponed the election there to tomorrow. Uh, election didn't take place in 141 uh, polling units. Of course, security concerns, even in Lagos, where I am, uh, there have been incidents of uh, uh, talks attacking polling units. And uh, you've, we've also had that in, in places like Delta State, where um, the BVAS machine now used for accreditation was snatched. We had a similar incident in Niger State, but then overall the election has been peaceful and um, these this incidents have, have really not marred the process, so to speak, because they, they are not really widespread. Right. So, Deji, a final comment from you there. You have mentioned the BVAS technology because Nigerians are using technology for the first time to vote. What has been the reaction? Well, everyone has applauded the beavers. The beavers, for, for so many people, has been the game changer uh, because with the beavers now, there's just no way uh, an ineligible voter would be allowed to vote. What used to happen in the past is that uh, you always have cases of overvoting, uh, ballot, I mean, thumb printing of ballot papers, but this time it's not possible with the beavers machine because you have to be accredited. Uh, the beavers has to uh, verify uh, the, the voter now. Uh, take your biometrics and all of that before you are allowed to vote. And then with the BVAS, uh, the results are transmitted uh, from the polling units now to INEX server. So it, it sort of speeds up the process and then it brings uh, some level of transparency to the process. So um, the, the BVAS, of course, has been a game changer. But of course, there have been complaints in some places about the BVAS mach right. machine not working effectively. But overall, Overall, the BVAS has been quite effective and had worked optimally. Deji Badimosi joining us there from Lagos. Thank you. Well, let's now broaden our discussion and bring in our panel of experts. From Nairobi, joining me here, Professor Peter Kagwanja, President and CEO of the Africa Policy Institute. In London, David Otto Endele, International Defense and Security Analyst. And joining us from Abuja via Zoom, Antonia Onda, Senior Program Officer, Elections at Youth 
Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement. A warm welcome to you all and thank you for joining us on the program. Let me start off with you, David, but I want to get a, a comment from all of you on this because observers have termed this election in Nigeria as the most competitive uh, in recent years. What is at stake in this election? Why does this election matter? Why is it so important? Uh, I think there's a lot at stake, um, and it's important to mention that um, you know Nigeria is a very key country, not just you know for the nationals, you know, but also for the region and internationally. It is uh, the most uh, populous nation in Africa. Um, that means um, if the presidential elections are holding, uh, including the parliamentary and senatorial elections, you know, as we know, um, then it's a very crucial change, and you know, uh, it's a very uh, big deal, you know, not just, again, as I mentioned earlier on, um, not just for Nigerians. But in terms of the competition, um, there are about 18 candidates, but, you know, three of them stand out. You know, I'm not diminishing uh, the, um, the influence of the other candidates, right. but you've got, um, uh, you know, Bula Ahmed Tinubu, um, you've got, um, you know, Abubakar Tiku, and, but also uh, Peter Obi. You know, these are the three, I call them the three main horses, you know, in this race. And, um, of course, um, uh, you know, the, the competition also comes because the incumbent, um, you know, President Muhammad Buhari um, is not running again, you know, because, of course, he's exhausted his two terms, you know. So there's that competition right. you know, from these three key horses, as I call them, uh, to uh, take the battle on. So that, that, again, because, you know, a lot of citizens are looking for change and, you know, there is this um, um, high level of support that seems to be coming uh, from all three candidates, you know, and, and because there's no clear uh, winner in terms of who is going to really take the, the seat, uh, that makes it very, very competitive. But so, um, again, I think one of the areas that makes it competitive is the fact that th three of the candidates are putting up a very strong case. Um, they have a very strong political background and, um, you know, they, they seem to have their strengths and their weaknesses. But let me, um, let me let's see in how it Antonio, goes, because we're already there. Right. As, um, let, let me bring in Antonia here because she's watching this uh, uh, at home in Nigeria. Um, Antonia, what's your view here? What is at stake uh, in this election? Okay, thank you very much for having me. So um, this um, election today is a very important election for Nigerians. And um, it's quite a different election compared to the previous elections conducted after the return to democracy. Um, because you could see um, there is a deployment of um, technology, a new technology in the elections, as well as um, we have large um, number of youth who are interested and really want to participate in these elections. And so it's actually a very important election for us. And um, if you also follow the issues around the country, um, um, the challenge with security, the challenge with, um, with um, economy and all, everyone tends to be very um, um, eager right. to actually choose the leader who actually address such these issues that we are going through. And so it's interesting to me. And um, um, it, those are the things that define these elections this year. Uh, Professor Kagwanja, I want to come to you with the issues that have formed this election. Work, uh, watching it uh, from Kenya, what factors do you feel will determine the outcome of this election? What has this election been about? Um, first and foremost, uh, we, we must congratulate the Nigerians for uh, basically holding an election at this time. I, there were uh, naysayers that uh, there's a lot of insecurity in that country. They're uh, even calling for the postponement of that of that election, but Nigeria has moved on. It's Africa's largest democracy with 87, uh, about 87 uh, million uh, eligible voters, uh, which is basically larger than any population uh, in many sub-Saharan African countries. Now, what is the stake is that Nigeria, this election is not about Nigeria, it's about Africa. Because Nigeria is not just the largest uh, country in Africa in terms of population, but it has a sway in the African Union and other regional governance structure of the continent. Nigeria is the country that, the, that is normally seen as the prism through which the rest of, our, of the world look at Africa. Therefore, a successful election in Nigeria right. it, it will give Africa a very good name. Uh, second, that this is election is competitive. Competitive in the sense that although it's a three horse race, uh, it shows that uh, there is freedom. 18 presidential candidates 
who have managed to you know get to, to get registered right. that's huge that's huge for any democracy anywhere in the world uh, and therefore what is at stake now is that uh, this election need to be seen as free fair and transparent uh, kudos to Nigerians again for uh, getting technology to intervene in terms of an, a kind of restoring the faith of people. Right. No wonder many youth are coming in to vote this time because the, 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 the threat of uh, you know, vote rigging and ballot staffing and right. other manipulation of election uh, seems to be ruled out by the, 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 the technology uh, that does not only co cover the bio data of the person but also uh, basically relays the election straight to the, uh, to the center rather than uh, you know, uh, carrying ballots by truck which sometimes might fall in uh, River Niger and other uh, shady places. All right. so, so in short, we are saying that uh, Nigeria is normally referred to as one of the hegemons of Africa. Therefore, if Nigeria goes through this election and we, 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 we think it is going to do that uh, successfully, then we have hegemonic stability. The stability of regional powers in Africa also means the stability of the continent. So let me bring you, David, back uh, to this election because Antonia has al al alluded to this. But I want to find out from you, though, what has this election uh, really been about? Antonia alluded to issues of the economy, issues of security. What's it been about? I think generally the elections has been about a number of issues. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, the growth of democracy in Nigeria, as you know, uh, the democratic process in Nigeria began in 1999 and, you know, fairly uh, new comparatively to uh, Western states but all African states, you know. So, uh, you know, this is some kind of a movement because, of course, uh, it's almost one of the uh, first elections where uh, the three top candidates, you know, have not come from, do not have a military background. You know, Nigeria has had a very strong uh, military background before 1999. So uh, principally what we see here um, is the possibility that we would have an election or a president or any of the presidents that, you know, has no affiliation uh, with the, the military as uh, the case used to be in previous uh, candidates. Uh, but crucially, as you said, you know, um, uh, you know, Nigeria is a very strategic country and it comes you know, under the ECOWAS. And as we've seen in other Western African countries like Mali and Burkina Faso, um, you know, uh, where, you know, we've seen coup d'etats happening um, uh, much frequently. So this election is quite crucial for ECOWAS because it does demonstrate that, um, you know, if this goes on smoothly, um, then, of course, um, elections, you know, should be uh, the instrument um, that, you know, leaders should be ushered into power rather than by the bullet. Right. So those are very critical uh, issues that, you know, um, we, you know, some of these leaders are looking at. But principally, uh, from an internal perspective, as you rightly mentioned, um, insecurity has been a major uh, problem in Nigeria. But not just that, you know, there has been recent uh, uproar about, you know, the, um, you know, uh, the, the absence of... Uh, uh, you know, cash, you know, by the uh, Central Bank of Nigeria, uh, which, you know, led to um, a lot of protests in the country. People are, you know, are some, some, some sort of worried about the, the economic right. uh, turnout of the country, low fuel, uh, which, of course, has been attributed to uh, the, sometimes, you know, to the ongoing war in Russia and Ukraine. But um, I think, you know, there's a lot at stake, you know, in this presidential election. Uh, but of course, not to undermine that um, we have the parliamentary and the senatorial elections taking place. All right. But Nigeria is a key country, as you know, and um, um, it, you know the, whoever becomes the president, um, you know, has a lot in their hands to deal with. And we are going to be looking at uh, what the incoming president will be dealing with in a moment. But for now, let's take a short break. When we come back, we will have more on Nigeria's election. To stay with us. <laughs> Now, prior to the election, we asked voters what their major concerns are. This is what they had to say. Over the years, uh, the nation has not really done very well in terms of economic, uh, uh, expanding the frontiers of our economy uh, to attract uh, the aggregates that we need 
to build capacity of the people. We're going to ad address these issues by trying to look at that leader or those leaders that will, uh, whose uh, manifesto and uh, whose track record uh, will reflect some of these uh, wishes of Nigerian people. So for me, economy and insecurity will be the dominant factors that will determine how I will cast my vote. The aspect of rigging, I am really, really open because a lot of youth especially, I work with youth, a lot of youth are really motivated to actually come out for this election. And we are just really open, um, open for a fifth and fair election. Chief among these issues is the, 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 the beavers, the, 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 the bimodal uh, verification uh, system. So it, it has actually come to stay like INEC uh, rightly mentioned, but there have been some concerns over the consistency of the beaver. The issue of uh, the, the economy of the country and uh, of course the need for job creation. Uh, these issues have been in the front burner in the last eight years and uh, there seems to be some struggle by the current administration in addressing some of these issues. These are the issues that will really, really determine uh, how Nigerians will go to the polls and vote. Welcome back to Talk Africa. Let's continue with our discussion. Still with me in Nairobi, Professor Peter Kagwanja in London, David Otto Endele, and in Abuja via Zoom, Antonio Onda. Uh, let me start off uh, with you this time, Antonio, because the elections chief, Mahamoud Yakubu, has called the vote, and I quote, the election of young people. Now, three quarters of those registered in this election are between uh, the ages of 18 to 49, according to uh, Electoral Commission data. So what is this conversation about the youth uh, participation in this election? How much have you seen of this? And did you see that participation today? Okay, um, so the youth are um, um, a large number of um, um, people in Nigeria. And oftentimes, the young people in Nigeria feel marginalized and not being carried along with political activities. And um, we could see that um, during the, um, um, as part of the um, people who are contesting as the candidates that, that are contesting for position in, in the, uh, under the political party. Um, so we have just very negligible amount of youth who are contesting as candidates under this political party. And so where you see that, um, where you see the youth participate more is in the area of registration, in the area of voting and other aspects, but not not being carried along in aspect of taking that leadership position and giving that opportunity to take leadership. And so this year, you could, this election, you, you, before the election, um, at the pre, during the pre-election period, you could see that the, 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 the young people are actually ready and eager and willing to participate and see that, yes, they will vote for a leader or who will carry the youth along and make sure that the needs of the youth are being met um, um, provide education, provide um, um, employment, provide an enabling community, and as well as um, um, address the issues of security that would give the, the young people um, opportunity and also giving the young people um, 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 opportunity to be part of the, right. the leadership of political parties as well as coming out um, to, to represent right. and, and be a kind in, um, in this political party. So you see um, them... Um, very eager to come out and also um based on the observation so far um a lot of people have um we've seen them young people coming out to actually vote irrespective of the challenges um assessing the police unit right. um at the law right. school at the police they vote yes they, they, they are taking their time to go through that just to uh, sign so, their franchise so, Professor Kagwanja, I want to look at a few issues that have come up here. And very briefly, uh, from your part, uh, the economy has been an area of concern uh, in Nigeria because according to the National Bureau of Statistics, between uh, 2015 and 2022, the Nigerian economy averaged about 1.1%, inflation at 23.1%. The country has experienced two economic recessions. Underemployment has reached 56.1%. How huge is the task ahead for an incoming president? Uh, the incoming uh, president will have a lot of uh, challenges in terms of bringing up the economy, which has been described as tumbling. Uh, it is basically in a very, very bad way. So that is going to be a huge issue. Um, and to, uh, you, you, they have to deal with issues of how people are reacting to that economy. 
for example, protest in the streets and so on. So uh, the economy is going to be the big, big issue in Nigeria. Obviously, uh, the, the, the security and other issues are going to be there, but the economy is the big issue. All right. Uh, I want to get a final uh, comment from you all, uh, because when you look at the manifestos of uh, the three of most of the candidates, though, there is one uh, running thread there, and that is the issue of uh, a promise of a better Nigeria. What does an incoming president need to do here to fulfill that pledge? And let me start off with you, Antonio, very briefly. Yeah, so what we look out for for the incoming president is first to address the issue of insecurity because with that, it is going to um, um, improve a lot of things. Um, first, the insecurity, and then we talk about unemployment, and then um, um, the education, and also um, the um, issue of um, um, inclusivity and actually carrying um, the um, young people, women, and people with disability along in every aspect of the of, of the um, democracy and um, governance. David, your thoughts? Uh, I think what's important is that um, whoever comes to uh, power understands uh, that Nigeria faces a a huge number of issues, especially insecurity, uh, which of course uh, has been demonstrated today with some attacks, you know, by the so-called Boko Haram group in in the northern part of Nigeria, in Goza specifically, and some other attacks, um, you know, dis disruption of the voting across the country. But I think it's more important to know that, um, you know. Uh, uh, whoever wins will have a huge tax, you know, to uh, deal with uh, the issues of, um, you know, uh, petrol uh, cost, you know, uh, inflation, uh, issues of, um, you know, shortage of cash, which is being experienced today in Nigeria. Uh, but more importantly, bringing the country together and creating some kind of an inclusive uh, system of governance. You know, Nigeria is a key country in the world, a key country in the region. Uh, and for Nigerians, you know, they want to see some level of stability. And that's what they're looking for, uh, for whoever wins this election. Well, uh, David, I want to find out from you because you did mention security as being a major factor here. And if I just go back to some statistics uh, between January and July of 2022, at least 7,222 Nigerians were killed. Another 3,823 were abducted. Has there been any significant articulation of this substantive issue by any of the candidates? I mean, how exactly, how complex is it going to be to tackle this security issue? I think it's very complex. You know, if you remember in 2015 when, uh, you know, then President Buhari uh, spoke about uh, the fact that he would deal with insecurity within three months, uh, that did not happen. So I think it's more important to move away from uh, what politicians promise that they would do, but to look specifically at uh, how they intend to deal with these issues. And that's what is not very clear in terms of what is in their manifesto. You know, they talk about dealing with the insecurity in the Northeast, uh, the Boko Haram Israel groups. Uh, in the north, south, north uh, west of the country, you have bandits. In the southern part of the country, but also in the middle belt, you have the Heda Farmers Crisis and the so-called Eastern, um, you know, uh, security network. You know, the pro Biafrans and separatist network. So there is a whole lot, you know, of uh, insecurity issues that uh, the country needs to deal with. You know, looking at um, perhaps engaging in prevention strategies, looking at response strategies, mm -hmm. but all security agencies. But more importantly, uh, the, key, the key here is for Nigerians themselves, you know, to play a very important role in any comprehensive strategy. So I think that's where, um, you know, the huge burden lies, you know, whoever wins. Insecurity is something that, you know, they must balance in order to, um, you know, bring some, you know, uh, some smiles, you know, in, in, in the faces of Nigerians. All right. Uh, Professor Kagwanja, you have the final word. And uh, what do you think an incoming president needs to do to fulfill a promise of a better Nigeria? Um, the, the winner of this election must address four issues. Uh, first, they must address the economy. The revival of the economy is key. Second, they have thrown in... Uh, you know, insecurity. Insecurity is rising from gangs and also terrorists like Boko Haram. The third, they have to address uh, youth unemployment. Uh, this election is about the youth and they are coming out because of unemployment. And finally, Nigeria will have to rein in uh, corruption. Those are four major issues that the incoming president, uh, whoever, that, whoever wins the election, must address. All right, uh, gentlemen, and, and uh, Antonia, and 
Professor Kagwanja and David Otto Endele, to you all. Thank you very much for being a part of this program. But that's all we have time for on this edition of Talk Africa. A big thank you to our panel of experts in Nairobi, Professor Peter Kagwanja, President and CEO, Africa Policy Institute. In London, David Otto Endele, International Defense and Security Analyst, and joining us uh, from Abuja via Zoom, Antonia Onda, Senior Program Officer, Elections and Youth Initiative for Advocacy, Growth and Advancement. Remember, you can be a part of this conversation through our social media platforms on Facebook and Twitter, and you can watch this and other editions of Talk Africa on our YouTube playlist. Do join us again next week for more Talk Africa. From me, Beatrice Marshall and the team here in Nairobi. Until next time, it's goodbye.